we're going to talk about how to think like a trader. And this is going to be probably part one of a mini part series. And the reason is, if you learn how to think properly, that's probably 95% of the battle. The other half, and that's a yogiism, would be to make sure you have a solid methodology and some money management. But your attitude is far more important than your aptitude. Over the years, I've been approached by a lot of people and asking me about trading. The first thing I tell them is markets go up and markets go down. And it's interesting because whenever I tell these people this, they look at me like I pooed my pants, as I've said ad nauseum. It's the same look I got many years ago when I went into Starbucks and asked for a cup of coffee, okay? <laughs> you have to have a younger person tell you, in case you know how to order. I feel like the, the guy from the progressive commercial, we can't stop you from becoming your parents. So evidently a cup of coffee is brewed, and what if you want a big one? Well, I want Vente, Vente brewed up, room for cream. I think it's something like that. Over the last 20-something years, when I tell them what I do, and they seem somewhat interested, no one has a problem with markets going up and markets going down. However, when they take a position and the market starts going down, like Bitcoin does, what do they say? Well, it'll come back. I'm in for the long haul. I'm going to buy more while it's cheap slash average down, slash dollar cost average. Or even worse, they begin to justify why the slide is not justified. They confuse the issue with facts. Once again, the Fed is printing money. The dollar will get decimated with inflation. Bitcoin will go up. Well, maybe it will eventually, but eventually it could be a long, long time. So... Maybe the justification or justifications will someday come true. However, someday is an indefinite time in the future. And borrowing a line from Greg Morris, a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. And furthermore, one of the things I want to get into in future shows is the reason that we do trade is because if something doesn't work and stops us out, not go sideways like I just showed and not stop out, we stick with those, but if something doesn't work and stops out, like Bitcoin, for instance, that frees up capital to find other opportunities or possibly short the market that's now going down. And I'll get into that in upcoming presentations more and more. So one thing to realize is traders don't think in terms of justification and themes. They think in terms of charts. And through the charts, the themes find them. Now, keep in mind that these themes are often revealed long after the fact. Many a times I'll get into a stock and it'll be a fantastic stock. And then I'll find out after the fact why that stock was fantastic. Or at least the justifications that were used to explain why it went up. So ASO was a setup last November it was an IPO pullback. And initially it was what I call a pioneer setup. And that's a setup that could occur within the first week of an IPO. Actually, it has to trade at least one week. So on day five of an IPO, there's a setup I call buy at B, which I've discussed in prior shows. And it was a buy at B, but I couldn't get too excited about it. The range wasn't really that fantastic. And that's why I didn't go after it from a technical standpoint. Now, the other thing was it's a brick-and-mortar retail company, Academy Sports, and I couldn't get excited about it. But, Dave, you just said don't confuse issue with facts. Okay, let me back it up a minute. When trading an IPO, a pioneer setup, meaning that you're going to get in an IPO that comes public on Monday, you might get in on Friday's close. Ideally, I like a little bit of excitement to happen there. I did buy a bank. A while back and I prefer again the stock, the stock to have a little bit of excitement as I often say what's well, a story fair to glory I like a little bit of a story behind the stock and I guess arguably you could say that's a theme but 
I'm also looking for specific technical things. And if those technical things are really there, I'll go ahead and take the setup. And it was hard for me to take the bank. But I took it, and I can't believe it's one of the best stocks in my portfolio right now. And I've been in it forever. EBR, I think, is the name of that one. Anyway, I have to admit, it was hard for me to take this first deep pullback in ASO. But the pattern was there. It looked pretty good. And that's one unfair advantage I have in that I do put out a trading service every day. And the way I approach it is, if I see a good-looking setup, I say, okay, Dave, if I don't show my clients that I found this setup and they find this setup later, even if it's after the fact, how am I going to justify that we didn't take this position? So it sort of forces my hand sometimes, and it sort of forces me to do some of these things, which are kind of unnatural, okay? It was hard for me to buy a brick and mortar stock, but the setup was there. Nice, nice uptrend followed by a pullback. So let's take a look at what happened. Nice rally, nice rally, nice rally, a little sideways action. And then now we are up around all-time high. So, so far, so good. Now, this thing did really well to my amazement. And apparently, people were sick of being mostly stuck in their houses. And this inspired them to go out into the great outdoors and do something, anything outside. Now, I probably shouldn't have used this example because to some, they're going to say, well, that, that was pretty obvious. I, 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 had, I thought of that same theme, too, and I actually bought Academy, and I did really well, too. Well, okay, if you are trading in themes, write down every theme that you think of and trade and carefully monitor them to see how many of them actually play out. And I'd be willing to bet about 1 in 10 will work. Your odds are much better if you're using a technical setup, something that you've, through empirical research, in other words, that's a fancy way of saying, you looked at a lot of charts and you're convinced that this is a good pattern, and you've seen me trade it or someone else trade it or you traded it yourself, maybe found 100 examples on your own and believe in it, then by all means, take that technical pattern and again, that theme will find you. Now, a while back, several years ago, actually, I had a friend visit, and after the obligatory, how's the kids, and how's work, yada, yada, the conversation often turns to the markets. And he says, well, I bought this certain company because I like the CEO. And I actually met the CEO one time with him, and the guy is a super nice guy. He's the kind of guy you'd want to have a beer with. And then he told me that he bought some more because it seemed low. And then he ended up buying on the way down. And then he said he bought some more because it was cheap, thinking he would flip it out at break even. Now, I drew the big blue arrow on the chart and said, this stock is headed lower. And he goes, no, 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 no. That's in hindsight. And I said, well, I'll give you your first buy, which may have been way back here but the rest of your buys you told me you bought because you thought it was cheap and it seemed low etc etc so that was not in hindsight and to make matters worse one year later i asked him about it and he said yeah i bought some more because it was so cheap well, the stock at that point was a penny stock. And I went looking for this thing about a month ago to do a presentation. And I couldn't find a chart. So like, it's delisted or bankrupt or whatever. So he likely has lost all of his money and threw a lot of good money after bad. So again, markets go up, markets go down. Everybody believes that. Nobody has a problem with that until they're in a market that's going down. Traders do not confuse the issue with facts. They don't think in terms of what a market should be doing. They think in terms of what a market is doing. Now, that, by the way, is the definition of fundamental versus technical analysis. Fundamental analysis suggests what a market should do. Technical analysis is what a market is doing. So don't confuse the issue with facts. 
Traders think in terms of supply and demand. An uptrend means there is demand. Conversely, a downtrend means there is supply. By the way, Mike Moody years ago at the American, one of the American Association of Professional Technical Analysts meeting gave a really good speech. And he talked about the fact that stocks don't have in-use value. Now, in-use value means something you could buy and someday use that you would personally use or maybe somebody else could use so it would have some sort of in-use value. And he kind of jokingly used the example of toilet paper, which ironically <laughs> would have actually worked out pretty good, right? So the point was that, let's say toilet paper is really cheap and you bought a thousand rolls at 10 cents a roll and you had a place to store it, et cetera, et cetera. Worst case scenario, you'd have toilet paper for life or however long it lasts you. If you have women in your house, it probably lasts about three weeks, but I digress. <laughs> anyway, the point is stocks do not have in-use value. It's a market based on supply and demand. And as I often quote Tom McClellan's late mother, Marion McClellan, paraphrasing, Everyone uses timing in their trading. Some people buy when they have money. Some people sell when they need money. And others use far more sophisticated methods. So that buying and selling, whether they have money or need money, creates the supply and the demand. Nothing more, nothing less. Either the market's going up or it's going down. Now, Traders think in terms of the greater fool. So if you get into a market, the only reason to ever buy a market is because you think there is a greater fool that will come along and buy that stock away from you. Last summer, the greater fool seemed to be these phone traders, okay? And I would go in and I was trading some of their stocks. And the phone traders, I guess, the, like the Robin Hood crowd and things like that. These people, a lot of newbies just trading right off their phones. Now, the only reason they ever buy a stock is because you think there's a greater fool. And you've got to question yourself on every trade. You've got to ask yourself, am I the greater fool? And you have to be willing to accept that sometimes you might be that greater fool. Anytime I buy a stock, I always ask myself, why would the guy on the other end be selling me that stock? So I think thinking in terms of the greater fool is very important. Now I've told this many times with channeling Mark Douglas, Mark Douglas, I have a cassette tape. It probably got tossed out one of the moves. But 30 years ago, I went to a Tellerate seminar, which I think later became a few other things and then ended up being like the uh, Traders Expo, Money Show, that company. But at this seminar, I was able to get a tape from Mark Douglas's presentation. I wasn't able to attend it live. Anyway, long story endless, he talked about a good salesman versus a bad salesman. A good salesman will make a few sales calls, get rejected one after another, go grab a cup of coffee, and then say, all right, he'll scream next, grab the phone, and continue on. Because he knows with those few bad calls out the way that he is getting closer and closer and closer to making a sale. A bad salesman will get a few rejections in a row and go drink his lunch. So the way a good trader thinks about the market versus the bad trader is a little bit more of a Churchill versus Einstein. So traders think in terms of going from one failure to another without any loss of enthusiasm. So if you have a valid methodology, you're following that valid methodology, and believe me, it's a lot of introspection, you have to be willing to continue to play along until the tide changes back into your favor. Now, you've got to be really careful at the same time 
of not becoming the definition of insanity. As Einstein once said, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different outcome. Something may have changed in you or in the markets, which could render your system invalid. 